Welcome to this week's program of Ascend, Life on the Autism Spectrum. It's a special program because we are filming from the field at the San Francisco Comic Con. I'm Keith Halperin. Stacey Kennedy. And we are filming this because we know that there is a very strong link between uh, the autistic community and various types of fandom. It's basically from uh, a love of the art and a shared sense of community. And so we were here to attend and find out what the angles might be. So we're going to be uh, interviewing a fair number of people today. Later on, our uh, co-moderator, uh, Will Burnick, will be here. He's currently at one of the panels. And so uh, we hope you will enjoy this as much as we do. We are now interviewing the very kind person who is responsible for all of us being here. Halia Smolzeski, who is the spokesperson for San Francisco Comic Con. Halia? Hi, thank you for having me. We're very glad uh, we can interview you and you're spending a few minutes of your very precious time. Can you tell our uh, viewers, what is San Francisco Comic Con? How did it come about? Well, San Francisco Comic Con is first and foremost a comic book convention, um, and that's what we are at the heart. I know a lot of times it's about the celebrity talent or you know other things like gaming, but in in its core, we are a comic book convention. And of course, we have those other aspects and those other facets, but we do like to bring it back to the classic comic books and the artwork. Uh, this is our first year here in San Francisco, and we are so thrilled to be here. I know you guys haven't had a convention here for about five years. So we're thrilled to be in the city. Excellent. Are you affiliated with the other Comic-Con or the, the Comic-Con down in San Diego? No, we are not affiliated. I know it gets a little confusing sometimes. People just hear the word Comic-Con, but I think Comic-Con actually just means comic book convention. It's like the slang for it. So we are a separate company, um, and we also host shows, um, our parent company, in Tampa Bay and Indianapolis. Excellent. Uh, I understand that you are tuning your conventions, the one in Indianapolis, uh, Tampa Bay, and here, to the local community and go toward the uh, community attendees. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, absolutely. I mean, all of our conventions are different because all of the places are different and what the locals want is different. And that's really how we operate. All of our programming, we draw from the community what people want. It's actually an application process. So whoever reaches out to us, as long as you have good content and a good attitude, we are welcoming you here with open arms. Excellent. Have you noticed any differences between the uh, community so far here in the Bay Area and the ones in Tampa Bay and Indianapolis? Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, I think the culture on the West Coast is just a lot different. People here are very laid back, very friendly. And also, I mean, the one thing that is pretty consistent is people are excited to be at a convention, which is good. That's the one thing we want them all to have in common. But um, like I said, our programming is very different for every show. Uh, I know at this show we were able to get a lot of organizations from San Francisco and the Bay Area. For example, we have Bricks for Kids for our Kids Zone. We have the Cartoon Art Museum actually set up here. We have the local Star Wars troops here as well. It's, um, it's really, really fun so far. Excellent. What are your particular goals uh, for the, the convention? What are you hoping to achieve here? Uh, we are hoping to establish ourselves here, and so far, so good. We're expecting 15,000 attendees over this three-day weekend, and I really think we're going to hit it. Um, based on the crowds today and how the flow of traffic is going, it's looking really good. Excellent. And from what I uh, saw earlier just coming in, you're well on your way to achieving that and exceeding that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Fingers crossed. <laughs> well, thank you. We really appreciate your time and, again, all the help you did allowing uh, Ascent TV to set us up. So very best of luck to you in San Francisco Comic Con. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for coming out. Uh, have a great time. Today we have our first attendee, and we would like to ask uh, what you are dressed as and... Is this part of the int your interest? Yes, this is uh, Halo 5, but today I'm Halo Kitty. <laughs> Halo Kitty. Nice. Very nice. So, um, so today um, there are many dressed up. And um, so is this pretty much uh, like a hobby, or do people do this yearly around, or...? Uh, for me, this is a hobby, but everyone does this all the time. Yeah. 
Uh, Japantown, I'm always at the Japantown Parade. Nice. Um, WonderCon, Comic-Con, and the first San Francisco Comic-Con. So um, Comic-Con is a lot of like comic series, and from what I understand, I see a lot of Marvel like, dress-ups and Star Wars, too. So um, any of those series that you follow as well? Bes oh, yeah. Um, the Superman and Batman <laughs> series. Suicide Squad, or that's more like the... Supergirl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there's the superheroes, and then there's the, not to say Siths, but the villains. So I'm, I'm interested to see as well today. So, But in any case, uh, your costume looks great, and it seemed like a really fun thing. I haven't personally been to one, but I've dressed up too and on other certain occasions. And so you're having fun so far today. Yes, this is my second day, and I'll be here again tomorrow. Oh, nice, great. What's your name again? Jose Delgado. Ho Jose Delgado. Nice to meet you, Jose, and thanks for talking with us. So, Jose, how did you originally get involved in fandom? It all started just Halloween parties, masquerade. I mean, before it was called cosplay, this was what I was doing back then. My first costume back when Star Wars first came out was Darth Vader. They didn't have nothing back then, only the helmet. I had to get the gloves from a motorcycle shop, get the cape from a um, ballet shop, <laughs> and then everything else, platform shoes, and a lot of stuff from Radio, radio Shack. Oh, and the lightsaber was a golf tube, a white <laughs> golf tube with a flashlight. So what is f really interesting there, so y y you're an old timer as far as, as fandom and cosplay and so on before it was cosplay. So what does this meant to you in your life? How is, th how is fandom and, and cosplay and the other activities you're involved in this important to you? You meet a lot of people and you make a lot of new friends. Excellent. Hard to imagine something more important than that. Well, thank you very much again for your time, Jose and enjoy the con. We're now down on the exhibitor floor and we're interviewing some of the folks that we see who catch our fancy. Hi, <laughs> I'm Joy. Hey, Joy. AKA Poison Ivy. <laughs> so, it, so I, I understand this is your first convention. Yes, yes. Very excited to be here. Very first one. I'm a newbie of the group. Uh, just happy to be here. So how did you get into it? I mean, this is your first con. So my little sister um, comes a lot, and last year I was able to do her makeup. She was Chitara, um, and I told her, I said, the next one you go to, I'm going to go, and here we are. So, Excellent. So for those who aren't familiar with Batman, can you tell us more about Poison Ivy? So Poison Ivy is probably one of my favorites. Um, she originally was a botanist, I do believe, and kind of became this evil villain mastermind. I, I think she's wonderful because she's smart, she's beautiful, um, intelligent, and yet she's so conniving and just vicious, and I just love her. So she's my favorite. <laughs> really good. Are you actively involved in uh, comic book fandom or in other types of fandom? Um, I'm not really. I'm more of just the um, moviegoer and... Uh, kind of what I see on TV, um, but definitely would love to get more in, involved and into it. Um, so, yeah. Well, this is certainly the place. Yeah, what are you hoping to see here at the con? I um, definitely want to see more of the um, architecture of the costumes, because I love to do stuff like this and build everything. So I would love to see more of costumes, see how they're done, um, and try to do bigger and better next year. Excellent. Do you do a lot of costuming yourself? I do. Um, I'm a part of a samba group that does carnival. So oh. we, yeah, so we do big stuff all the time. So more feathers and, you know, things of that nature. So this is a little bit different for me, but kind of the same concept as far as making your own stuff and doing it that way. So, yeah, I've been doing costumes forever. Really good. So this is much more subdued than the stuff that you usually do. Yeah, this is way more low-key <laughs> for me. Normally it's not as much stuff on, but uh, definitely the wow factor is there. So, 
really good. So tell us, how long did it take you to uh, put your costume together? Well, um, I kind of wanted to go low-key as far as my actual costume, uh, just stuff I wear for dance class, um, and then the wig and stuff like that. Uh, this actually only took maybe two days just for the fact of drying. Um, it literally is paper mache, super easy. Uh, saw how to do it on YouTube and just did it. So, um, yeah, about two days. If someone wanted to get into costuming, uh, and again, we're here in the Bay Area, do you know places where people can like learn about costuming and getting involved? That I don't, and I would love personally to know myself. Um, I kind of do more of a, a community space as far as with our dance group and learning within our own dance group. Um, but I would love to take classes and learn more um, and just what I see on YouTube and, and stuff like that. So I don't know of any places, but I personally would benefit and love to find other locations that offer that type of teaching. Good to know. And I bet if you ask around here, there may even be some panels or exhibitions specifically related to costuming you'd be able to find. Yes, definitely. Thank you again, Joy. I hope you enjoy the rest of the con and you're a great newbie. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. How did you two get involved in uh, fandom in this particular type of steampunk and, uh, more specifically? Well, I, um, I've always liked the creative, the, the creative environment and uh, I've been a fan of, say, uh, like Jules Verne since mm -hmm. I was a kid. And uh, there was something about that aesthetic that's mm -hmm. always drawn to me. And uh, it was at a Comic-Con in San Francisco about nine years ago. I came down with a friend of mine and I had not, hadn't heard of steampunk. And I walked into the hall, and there's like a whole group of uh, somebody looked right out of a Jules Verne book. Mm -hmm. So I was like, "That's I got to do that." <laughs> what about you, Michelle? Um, we kind of have always been unusual. <laughs> We're the people that don't like sports but love all the weird stuff, yeah. you know, all the movies, TV shows that are like that, Game of Thrones. That's some of the reasons that we want to come here and. See all the Star Wars, Star Trek. Yeah. We're geeky. Yeah, we're sci-fi. We're, we're <laughs> generally sci-fi fans. So. Do you two attend a lot of different cons? No, not really. Uh, you know, what, what um, if something like fits into our time and schedule, mm -hmm. you know, we'll, we'll come. So, and this is a first uh, Comic-Con in San Francisco in quite a while, so... Someday we'll make it to San, we'll make it to San Diego. It's very hard to get tickets. Yeah. Oh, indeed, indeed. <laughs> so, for those of our viewers who are heard of steampunk and are more interested in learning more about it, are you? Well, first of all, I should ask you: Are you from here in the Bay Area? We are. Yes. Okay. If someone wanted to find out more about steampunk activities here in the Bay Area, what should they do? Well, on Facebook, there's a, a group called uh, Sacramento Steampunk, mm -hmm. and there's a, a, there's a few number of steampunk uh, groups on Facebook. And uh, actually, all you really need to do is, is Google steampunk, and um, you'll find it. They've had conventions. There used to be one in Santa Rosa where the, they would have the locomotives. They would oh, take yeah, the yeah. hand trains. And they would redo them, and so they look steampunk, and they drive it down the tracks and race those things. Right, the yeah. uh, the, the car races. The, yeah. The, yeah, hand so, car. It's a, it's a great thing, and plus, Burning Man is this weekend, so I think all your steampunk people are probably there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Quite likely. Well, thank you both very thank you. much for your time, okay. and, and enjoy the rest of the con. You too. All right, thank, thank you very you. much. Hi, I'm, I'm back at Morphicon 5 with... Uh... Hi, I'm Andre. Black Nerd Comedy on YouTube. Good to see you. All right then. Looks like we got an interview. So, is is this your first Morphicon? It is not. This is actually my fourth. I've been to every Morphicon except for the first one. So it's been great, and, and to see it grow as much as it has is amazing. So it's been great. How about you? This is my fifth one. Oh, so you've been to all of them? Yeah, I'm one of the few people who've been to all five Morphicons. Wow, I bow down to you, sir. That's amazing. Uh, Watching the first series, uh, Mighty Morphin back in, in the 90s, I, uh, I, I, it was so crazy because I was probably a little bit older than the, the group that was supposed to be targeted to, but I still watched it because it was like part superhero action.
action and then also part like teenage high school drama <laughs> or at least a little bit it wasn't too dramatic but you got to see these lives so it was something I could relate to uh, when I was watching and then to see you know this cool team of diverse teenagers to see you know uh, Zach Black Power Ranger running around it's like it's just a show that got me and then once the Green Ranger saga happened I was like I'm done I'm hooked this is my show so yeah man I love it who was your favorite ranger my favorite ranger uh, I think I would have to say Zach. When I first started watching the show, I was really big into Zach. Just because it was like cool to see, uh, uh, you know, a young African American male be like a superhero on, on the screen. Like that was really cool. But I've just grown to love, you know, all the original Mighty Morphin Rangers for, for various reasons. Uh, because I just thought they were all wonderful. I and mean, then even when uh, Rocky Adam and Aisha came in, like I was really excited about them too. Coming out. I thought Aisha was really cool. Okay, Ashley is just such a cool person, both on the show and also in person in real life. Uh, yeah, and then just it's just nice to see that the legacy continues all the way up to today. What was your favorite Megazord? My favorite Megazord? Uh, I mean, I love, well, I love, I love the Ultra Zord. I love when the Megazord and then Dragon Zord and they landed inside Titanus and just became Ultra Zord. Like, that was just awesome. I really like that. And I like the movie Megazord. I thought that was really cool, too. It's just being able to be in a place where everybody is into Power Rangers, and it's so cool because you can be in any era. Like, like that's what's so neat about this particular franchise. There's not many shows where it goes on for 20, 20 years, but it changes every year. So no matter what time you came into it, you have your own particular favorite set, and then you start learning about other people's season and, and, and learning about all the different types of Rangers that are out there. So it's really nice to have a, a, a convention where you can enjoy your version of Power Rangers, which you grew up with, as well as checking out all the other stuff. And you get new people every day, both young and old, who start to find out about this thing and get excited to it. And now it's even expanding, like you start seeing like other stuff as well here. So it's just, it's really neat. Um, which Ranger would you like to see return for the 25th anniversary? For the 25th anniversary? Wow. Um, hmm, that's a tough one. Okay, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Forever Red 2, Forever Red Part 2. You know, we had some people got to do it, and not all the Rangers got to do it, so Forever Red Part 2, let's do it. Oh! <laughs> Which era do you prefer, the Saban era or the Disney era? Well, I grew up, my my big thing was Mighty Morphin, so I would, I would say like the, the early Saban is what I was really into. And then of course I'm checking out the new stuff as a late watching Down in Charge, and I was in charge of uh, Mega Force, Super Mega Force. So yeah, uh, nothing against Disney. It's just there was an era of time that I always talk about where I kind of like became an adult and tried to be like, well, this this stuff is I'm not gonna do this stuff anymore because I'm a grown man. And then like I realized how miserable that was to live that life. And so that's why well, that's why part of why I did my uh, my YouTube channel and, and started getting back into this stuff is like I ignored all this and I should have done that. Like I, I should be embracing what I like. And so now I'm like going at full force. Welcome. We are at AT&T Park today here with Will Clark. And Will, would you like to ask some questions? I'd be glad to. I'm here with Will Clark from the from the Giants themselves. And 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 now I'll and now I'll start off with the questions. Will Will tell us about Autism Awareness Night and and your involvement and and your involvement and the Giants' involvement. Well, thank you so much, Will. We uh, got involved with Autism Awareness Night about 10 years ago. The San Francisco Giants have decided to make that part of their yearly promotional campaign. And part of the proceeds of the ball game that we're going to have, and it's going to be tomorrow night, part of the proceeds go to Autism Speaks plus numerous other autism groups here in the Bay Area. Tell, tell us about the tell us about the Giants' involvement in the autism commu community. San Francisco Giants are very proactive within their community. They like to sponsor quite a bit of 
uh, days at the ballpark, one of them being autism night. So not only do they try to help out the community, they try to give back as much as possible. And autism night is going to be tomorrow night, as we said, here at the ballpark. It'll be against the Milwaukee Brewers, and it's going to be to raise awareness. That'll be first off, and then also raise some funds to help out the autism community here in the Bay Area. And then the Giants also do numerous other charities also. So, Will, um, so I understand that your son is on the autism spectrum. Is, pr is that pretty much the reason why you got involved and started autism awareness? That is, uh, that's definitely the truth. Actually, uh, my wife and I, we were uh, part of the United Way before, uh, before we had our son. Uh, when our son was about two and a half year old, years old, we found out that he was on the autism spectrum. Uh, since then, we have been advocates for autism awareness. And, uh, you know, the Giants have jumped in and, and been involved. Our son now is 20 years old. He's at a local uh, community college in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He's doing great. He's making great grades. Uh, he has yet to find out what he wants to do with the rest of his life, with his career path. But uh, he's definitely a young man who's been improving. Wow, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So um, over the past 20 years, how, um, how have things changed? with um, your involvement and your son's you know, inspiration in autism? Right. Well, in the 20 years of involvement with autism, we've seen the numbers dramatically decline, believe it or not. Uh, it used to be one child in every triple digits came along, was, was a, a member of the autism community. Now it's one in every double digits. and. Um, that is a trend that is not good in my eyes. I want to raise awareness. I want to raise some funds to hopefully battle this disease. Um, and, you know, I think that as long as, you know, I'm a sports celebrity, as long as I have a platform to get my message across, that uh, my wife and I should definitely use that platform as much as possible. So we've been involved now for 10 years with the San Francisco Giants, and we were involved before that ev even more with other ball clubs also. So you're, uh, sure. So um, your your son, you said, is in college, and um, and he's not sure what his interest is at the right. moment or so. And um, does he uh, does he have college mates that he talks um, talks about these things too? Definitely, you know that's that's the one thing that's the one thing about college. Um, you know, there there are quite a few people who do go to college who don't know exactly what their future is going to be and trying to prepare for it. So he's definitely talking to some of his friends and finding out what they're going to do. And then uh, you know we're trying to find out what his interest is, uh, what he would like to do along his lines of study, and where he wants to go with that. And you know, for us personally as parents, it's it's great to see the fact that he is now in college in making that adjustment. Uh, we have several other friends on the autism community who aren't as, as gifted as us. Their, their children are not allowed to go to college. And so, you know, we feel very blessed and at the same time, you know, say a lot of prayers for other people. And ho hopefully, um, maybe the people in college will spread this awareness as well and just get the word out and pretty much people educate themselves. So. Um, Anybody on the spectrum, you know, is they feel they're capable of doing anything. And I'm definitely, sure. definitely. And, and not only, you know, not only people on the autism spectrum, but also on, on you know, other uh, diseases, shall we say. And, you know, that's the one thing about most of the colleges nowadays. They do cater to, you know, special needs uh, young adults. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very proud to, to say that a lot of the colleges here in the Bay Area do cater to special needs adults. Oh. Will, I know you've been in the autism community for quite some time now. You've seen a lot. You've managed to raise your son. What kind of advice do you and your wife have for uh, other parents who are just kind of starting out that path? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, you know, each child, each adult, um, is, is completely different. And from my wife and I, we took it on a day-by-day -day type process. And every time a new development would come along that, you know, it was a positive for us, 
we, uh, you know, it made our day all that more better. And, uh, you know, so for us personally, we took it day by day. And, uh, you know, we watched our son go from grade school to high school and now into college. And, uh, you know, he continues to amaze us every day. And uh, that's my sort of speech that I give to other parents is, you know, enjoy every day that it comes. And, you know, when he makes a new stride or she makes a new stride, um, you know, have it with a big old smile, enjoy it, and move on to the next one. Well, if he inherited your smile, he's doing pretty good. <laughs> um, uh, there's a lot of people that are going to be watching the game, that are going to be uh, involved in the show, the people in the community. What kind of uh, advice do you have for folks in the community, whether it's the business community or just the fans out there, on how they can help? You know what, that's great. Uh, you know, we would love to have, you know, monetary donations to help with autism research, but it's just the awareness, knowing the fact that, you know, this was one in triple digits and now it's one in double digits and it's getting worse, uh, you know, as time goes by. It's affecting more more people, it's affecting more communities. And so to a raise, raise that awareness for everybody is, is the number one step. And if we raise funds, that's even more better. This is Keith with Final Thoughts, and I'm going to turn this over to Stacy for her, and then I will finish up. Hi, this is Stacy Kennedy, and my final thoughts is this is Comic-Con San Francisco, and it was a fun day, and um, it goes on for another day, so those who are interested, you can go tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. And my final thoughts... As mentioned at the very beginning, our tie-in for this is that one of the missions that Ascend has as an organization is to increase the awareness of people on the spectrum within the arts. Also, a considerable number of members of the autistic community are quite interested in this and other types of related media. My observations have been that a pretty considerable percentage of the people here appear to be, or at least display some of the things which are normally associated with folks on the spectrum. And that being said, it's quite a good place to meet others who are like you and share your interests, which is fundamentally the purpose of things like this. At the same time, there is at this particular convention, it is particularly loud and crowded, and some of the members of our community might have problems with the sensory overload. Though, to be fair to the organizers of the con, they've set up a specific room where people can chill out. Uh, other than that, it would be quite hard for some folks to deal with it, but if you can, this would be a great uh, place to meet other folks who are just like you and make you feel welcome. So. For this week's program, I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Stacey Kennedy. And this is Ascend TV, wishing you the very best until we speak again. Thank you.